and welcome to another uh, Views from the Bridge, uh, brought to you by the Bridge Committee of the Greater Hartford Association of Realtors. My name is Lucas Nash, and we are joined today by the Windsor Locks Town Planner, uh, Jennifer Rodriguez. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me today. Um, so to start, for um, those in our audience who, who don't know, uh, tell us a little more about um, what a town planner is and what you do. Sure. So I work for the town of Windsor Locks. I've been here since 2005. Uh, town planner often has various roles. It might depend on whether you're working for a small community or a bigger city. Um, in the role that I am in now, I work with Windsor Locks to make sure that you're balancing the needs for land development and preservation. Uh, you work with the community members and various departments and uh, partners. Uh, to make sure that you're providing a community that is inclusive, um, where people can thrive, a community that's connected um, to things like jobs and transportation. Um, and then, you know, on a daily basis, we typically are working with developers and landowners on how they can um, utilize their land. Uh, we also might review applications for the Planning and Zoning Commission on particular and site-specific uh, development proposals. Wow, that's a big job. Um, so um, tell me, um, how has Windsor Lock started to work towards the creation of more inclusive housing? Sure. So just to put it in context, uh, Windsor Locks is a community of about 12,800. It's obviously a transportation hub, right? We have the airport, train, bus, and uh, convenient access to Highway 91. Um, it's got really charming neighborhoods. They're uh, long established and tight knit, and there's a fairly good network of sidewalks and parks. And I bring that up because um, all of those things relate to people's homes and where they live and the way they thrive. Um, and obviously uh, those homes uh, relate to our conversation today. today. And um, as you may also know, the Connecticut general statutes require that 10% of each town's housing stock is by definition affordable. And that definition is based on area median income. In Windsor Locks, that's about $67,000. Uh, we're just at about 10% right now, uh, but we sort of chase that number. We build more market rate units and then that percent drops. Uh, when the homeowner transfers out of FHA loans or move those to another town, those numbers go down again. So we have to make sure that um, we're at or above that 10% because it's the right thing to do, because you wanna provide that housing choice, but also you're working with a state law. Uh, so we have a diverse housing choice. We're about 70% single family home, but we do also have a lot of multifamily homes. Uh, we have a lot of nice condo communities. Um, we have a great adaptive reuse regulation and adaptive reuse regulation um, typically looks to incentivize reuse of existing buildings. And so those would permit conversion of a single family home to multifamily. Um, there is a provision there that the local architecture is preserved, which is something that everybody um, definitely cares about. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, those sorts of regulations, they also reduce blight and they incentivize investment because they do um, tend to make it more affordable when you're able to have two units. Uh, we've had a lot of people in the downtown, a lot of young um, young maybe or maybe professionals um, moving in buying these single family homes adding a second unit and then they have the money to reinvest in them um, while they're renting the other unit um, we also have a windsor locks housing authority they have three properties two of them are in the downtown area so they're proximate to all of the things that people need and then we have a third property uh, that's more inland and then uh, some of the other things that we're doing right now, we're exploring accessory dwelling units. Over 100 communities in Connecticut already permit accessory dwelling units. So when you think of not necessarily a full second unit, but maybe you have a single family home and you want, um, you know, a second suite, maybe that's for an in-law, maybe it's to be able to rent like a loft apartment. Those are the sorts of things that they're looking at right now. Uh, we have a pretty strong downtown revitalization program. In urban renewal, a lot of our existing buildings were torn down, so we're sort of reinventing the downtown. Um, and we want to make sure that new housing units that are in the downtown are proximate to resources, transportation, jobs, 
that connectivity is really important in supporting a person's um, housing choice. Those things are uh, supporting housing choice, but they're not necessarily meeting the affordable definition. Those, uh, those homes are not restricted. So say, for example, um, the property owner has no deed restriction, and then the next person that moves in that they rent to, um, you know, that, that rent could go up. There's no, there's no restriction there. So that unit is no longer considered affordable. And so you run that risk uh, when something is not deed restricted. And that's, um, so that's where this affordable housing plan comes into play. There is a state law that requires a five-year housing plan that each community create. And uh, Windsor Locks is starting our um, workshops late in April. So, um, you know, we'll be able to inventory our current housing. Uh, we'll identify the community's needs. We'll also do an architectural preference survey. I alluded to that before, but that's really important in people um, knowing that additional units doesn't mean that it doesn't have to fit. Um, and then, you know, the result of that affordable housing plan will be a recommended number of affordable units and a strategy to achieve and maintain that number. So it, it's a lot, um, but, you know, hopefully in a couple of months, we'll have that strategy down and uh, get to work. Great. How can uh, we as real estate professionals work with um, community planning? Uh, offices to achieve these goals to increase housing choice. Yeah, that's a that's a great question, and I'm thankful for that uh, potential partnership. Uh, there's no question that historically both of our professions, municipal planning, uh, zoning, and real estate professionals, work together to restrict housing choice. And maybe that wasn't intended, but that played a part in segregation. So I think our profession should work together um, and partnership to correct that. It's very important. Um, it's also a really tough visceral conversation, but it's a necessary one. Um, first, I think there are a number of fair housing bills coming out of the State Planning and Development Committee. Uh, most recently is uh, State Bill 1024. Following uh, those bills, and uh, being sure that your organization is part of that discussion is uh, pretty important. Uh, second, I think affordable is not a dirty word. It can be um, that we work together to talk about the people who benefit from affordable units. And um, you know, if we can share in that conversation and telling um, and helping people understand that you know this could be a college student, it could be your bank teller, uh, the person at the grocery store that you see weekly, um, your teachers, your grandparents, um, you know, that is affordable housing. Um, third, I think supporting local and state regulatory changes, submitting supporting testimony, um, you know, that can be really important so that the people who are helping to make those laws are hearing the voices of the people that are involved that work with people to find their homes on a daily basis, like yourself and myself. Um, finally, the, affording the affordable housing plan that I talked about earlier, uh, that workshop uh, that's coming up um, in Windsor Locks, similar plans like that are being developed all over the state, right? We all have to come up with them. So no matter which community uh, you support or represent, they have already gone through this process or they might be going through it now. So, you know, being part of that, keep in regular contact with your local planning offices, attend local meetings if you can. Um, as a matter of fact, the one that I mentioned in Windsor Locks coming up in April, uh, that's planned for later this month, uh, there's an open seat. It'll be a virtual table, but um, all of your partners are welcome to, um, to be part of that. We would love to have your expertise um, at those meetings. Absolutely, well, I know I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Um, can you uh, share with us a, a recent success story that you've had? Yes, the Montgomery Mill is uh, our favorite recent story to share. Um, that building is 200,000 square feet. It was blighted and vacant for, for years, really since um, the late you know, 1990s or um, early 2000. There's really been nothing in there. It was vacant, contaminated, um, and it was the gateway into town. And it was not uh, very welcoming at all. 
Uh, it's along the Connecticut River and now has been restored to 160 riverfront apartments, um, half of which are affordable at various income tiers. Uh, the developer Beacon Communities, uh, they were able to use historic tax credits, housing tax credits, and we have a local tax increment financing district policy, and that helps to finance the restoration. Um, so in your organization, if you're familiar with what types of incentives there are uh, locally and with the state um, and can help uh, to you know, network with your local communities on what you're seeing as a need. And if you have somebody who's looking to develop or, or purchase the property, um, those are important things to know. And we were glad to be able to help out in that respect. And then um, I highly recommend that anyone visit the site. It's got a new trailhead park just north of uh, these 160 units. It leads to a four and a half mile bike trail along the canal and the river. Um, it's also important that the mill is walkable to the to be constructed new train station that we'll have downtown as part of our revitalization. Um, it's just beautiful. It's won two state awards, two national awards. We're really proud of it. And we are so excited to be meeting um, some new residents too. Quite a few of the apartments are, are rented to people that were in town that were looking to downsize. Um, we've also uh, welcomed new retirees and we've welcomed a lot of new young people that uh, moved in from out of town. Uh, so it's been fantastic. Wow, that's great. It sounds like the whole community benefits. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. This is an important discussion. I'm thrilled to uh, be starting this connection and I hope we keep it up together. This has been another segment of Views from the Bridge. If you have any questions or concerns, please email us at uh, ghar at gharonline.com, subject line, Views from the Bridge.